Hello and welcome to another budget and legacy video with a 2006 Toyota Hilux. Uh, as we know from Top Gear, indestructible. Anyway, this one isn't. We have a wheel bearing that's gone, a rear wheel bearing. And the way you can tell is obviously when you jack it up, sometimes you might hear a noise. And I've spoken this about wheel bearings before, like a whirring noise. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. This one's actually worn. Hopefully you can hear this. So there's play there and there's play there. Hopefully that came through on the camera. I'm not sure I've picked it up. But anyway, there's play left and right and there's play up and down. And what we're using for this, we're going to be using all genuine Toyota parts for this. So we've got bearings, we've got seals, we've got everything, but it's all genuine. And uh, yeah, so we need to take off the wheel, take off the brakes and obviously slide all the old half shaft. So first thing to do is whip off the wheel. 21 mil. <laughs> Now, we need to get off the rear hub. These can be a nightmare to take off or they can be quite easy. There is holes, there's, there's uh, definitely two anyway. One, two, sometimes there's maybe three that have little threads in and you can put a, a bolt in and you can screw two bolts in and push it out. The problem with that is if you've got a big lip on this hub, we're doing it that way, you can snap all the little springs and stuff. So I personally don't like doing it that way, just because you can do damage. So all I'm going to do is kind of do it the old fashioned way with the hammer and hopefully just kind of work it out that way. And there is just no budging out of that whatsoever. That is absolutely solid. So that says to me there is a lip on here. If in doubt, get a bigger hammer. There we go! Bigger hammer! And at least the best way about this is we're not gonna, like I said, cause an issue with any of the springs. It was just kind of jammed in there. There we go. All right, well, just as well we are doing this because the seal, the diff seal is gone. That's all diff oil. I thought it might be um, the brake cylinder leaking, but it isn't. And when you smell it, that's gear oil. And the next thing we kind of have a problem with is these brake shoes are no good. That one's not too bad, but this one's definitely shot. And not only that anyway, they're absolutely full of oil. You could clean them. If they were new or a lot better than this, I, I might clean them. But considering we've got this kind of damage, it's going to be kind of pointless. So I've now got to tell the customer that he's going to need more parts and we're going to have to do it on the other side all oh, the joys right first thing i need to do is disconnect the handbrake cable now on this one it's actually quite easy because these can sometimes be a nightmare especially with back shoes and you just get sunk in there wedge this lever forward and hopefully i should be able to pull this clip out and lift it around. So I'll try and do this without getting in the way of the camera. I'm gonna hold the little kind of bar at the end, push that over and lift it up, hopefully. There we go. And there we go. Handbrake cable is out. Now, right at where the handbrake cable joins in, and you can see with my fingers, just behind here, there's two 10 mil bolts. No point me showing you because you'll see it as soon as they're there. They're just, they're really close. And this will allow the handbrake cable to completely come out. Because we're going to need it to come out because we have to take off all this surround. That's the way it's bolted on. Just behind here is four bolts. 
and it all comes off together. We might even need to disconnect the top cylinder. Hopefully we don't, but I don't know. So there's 110 mil. And as you can see, there we go. And now you can see where them two 10 mil bolts were. Now that's out of the way. We can just leave that dangling. Behind here, like I said, I'll show you this if I can. Now, as you can see, we're behind here now. We've got the ABS sensor. So you want to be careful you don't damage that. And um, if you're always unsure, just take it off, kind of take it out of the way, which is what I'm going to do. Looks like a 10 mil there as well. So I'm going to whip that off. And as you can see, we've got one, two, and three, four. These 14 mil bolts, again, as you can see, I can't really film it. Right, before I was rudely interrupted with a phone call. So as you can see, we've got four bolts. I'm gonna take off them four bolts, which would, should release everything. I'm also going to be replacing the cylinders. So I'm gonna disconnect the cylinders because I'm gonna replace the cylinders and the shoes. But lucky enough, on the back here, we can just see, right in the middle there, that's the brake coming in so we can just so I can just clamp this brake line with this special plier things. Now, if you haven't got a set of these pliers and honestly, they're not that expensive, uh, I would suggest you get in a set. What you can do is you can disconnect whichever you, cylinder or whatever you happen to be working on. Push the brake pedal all the way down and wedge it with a bar between the brake pedal and the seat. That will stop any fluid going out. But the only way you can do it is release a cylinder or a caliper first and then do it but um, this just means I don't have to take it back down from the lift and that kind of stuff so that should do good enough for me now I'm going to take off these 14 mil bolts here again no point me really filming it because they're just four 14 bolts I'm going to take off the ABS sensor once I got that we'll turn the camera back on and uh, We'll see what we can do from there. Okay, once you've undone all that, so we've undone the four bolts, we've disconnected and undone the ABS sensor just to get it out of our way. Not really, you don't really need to, but it's just so it doesn't get damaged. Disconnected the brake, handbrake cable, and we've also disconnected the cylinder. And this should now just kind of pop out what it already has, but it just kind of pop out and it should all come to you, including the shaft. And there we go. Now we'll take this to the bench and we'll just see, right for a start, this is obviously why we're leaking, actually see the girdle spring on the seal wasn't even attached to the seal, so that would suggest to me why it was actually leaking inside. We're replacing that seal anyway so it's not a big deal but it's just something to be aware of. When you look at these types of seals, there's a special spring. Camera kind of might just see the silver outline there. And that's what, when the shaft goes in, that's what kind of holds the seal around the shaft. If that spring comes off, even on a brand new seal, it's not gonna seal. So there could be a problem with that seal. We're changing it anyway, but that's, that's why we're leaking inside. We've got to take the shaft to the bench and see what the story is. Right, hope you can see that now. This is the um, handbrake cable I was telling you about. So there are the two bolts. This is where the actual brake cylinder goes. Now, what I like to do is always undo the bleed nipple. That will allow you to get the spanner in to actually turn. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can kind of get the brake line spanner, which has got the special little hole in, and you can get these fellas too. Uh, brake line spanner but they actually flip all the way around doesn't really matter what you use but once you take out the bleed nipple I find it's just so much easier to actually get the spanner in now as you can see what we're left with and you can see the movement in this so we know our bearings gone uh, someone's already been at this smacking it with a hammer and a chisel to put it back in or to take it off I'm not really quite sure because these can be a nightmare you can't really get a puller or anything on them you can only really do one or two things. Try and get a hammer and chisel and very carefully go around and pop it up or cut it off. But you have to be very careful you don't damage the ABS ring. You can buy these. I'm gonna try first and just go around with, um, with a chisel very, very slowly and try and pop that off. If not, I'm gonna cut it. And I'm sure there's another one there. I can't remember. I think there's two retaining clips on here. And this is the ABS ring and then the bearings down there. 
So what I'm going to do is, there's no point me showing you this unless I'm really having problems cutting it off or anything. We're just going to get a chisel and very, very carefully I'm going to try and work this out. Like I said, I'm not going to show you because it could be boring, but if I run into problems, I'll turn the camera back on. Just kind of show you what I'm doing. I've just got a normal chisel here and I'm very, it's, it's coming off very easy. I'm not forcing it. If it was really, really difficult, I think I just cut it off. I still might get the retaining clip. I don't know. I'm just going to see. Someone has kind of been at these and I'm all just literally going around it. Very easy. All the way around. Now I've got a kind of a big gap in there. I should be able to get something slightly bigger with a bit more of an angle and just go around now the most will be some special Toyota tool um, but I haven't got one so and just every now and then just flip it in the vise just so you can get to the other side See, the thing is, someone's been at this, and I don't know. Doesn't look great. I think I'm just going to cut this off and put new retaining clips on. Because it just doesn't look, just doesn't look that good. And all you have to do to cut it off is to get an angle grinder. Now you do have to be careful, you don't want to really be cutting into the drive dash, just an angle grinder straight and just chop it off and then it'll just fall away. It's, it's really simple, so there'll be no point in me showing you that. But if you was going to hit it off, this is essentially the way you do it. Just nice and slowly kind of go around. I'm only using a little hammer, so um, if you really have to force it, you're going to mostly do damage and you're going to have to replace it anyway. So it is, to be honest, it is best to replace it. Sometimes you can get away with these sort of things and sometimes you can't. And I just don't think I'm going to risk it. So I'm just going to cut them off and be done with it. Now we have some problems here. Um, I cut this off and as you can see, what I did is use the angle grinder flat like that and just went through it. But we have two retaining clips here. This should just be one, and hopefully this ABS sensor will come out. I'll just show you this in a second. So just try and walk this ABS sensor out, because obviously we can't cut that. So again, it's just a case of going around. It's moving every time I do this. It's just going to take time. I'm going to go around and I get the ABS sensor out, but this has really been hacked at. This has been cut just take this off so I can show you that. There's a big long slit cut in here, which obviously shouldn't be, but as you can see, just clean that up a bit. You can see someone, hopefully you can see that, has cut through that. Or they don't seem to have cut it off this one though. I don't know if they've cut it off something else and put it there as an extra precaution, but you don't, you don't need to do that. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's just not right. According to Toyota, I've been told there's only one, but I think there's one in here too. It's been such a long time since I've done one of these, I can't really remember. But I think there's another retaining clip inside there. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna very gently go around this ABS sensor, as you can see, just pushing it out a little bit at a time. This could take a while, so be patient especially with this bit as you can see it is coming it's just taking its time so i'm going to go that all the way around once i pop the abs sensor off we'll uh, see what's actually in there now just as i thought there, there is two retaining clips um well they're, they're kind of like bearings because they're like a retaining sleeve toyota said there's only one but i think what the problem was they maybe didn't realize this had abs if it doesn't have abs i think there's only one because this has got the ABS ring, there's two. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think, because I remember someone saying to me before on a video that, uh, you know, you can't really get wrong parts. You give them the number plate and you get the right parts. That's just not the case. This is a Toyota. I gave Toyota the number plate and the chassis number, and the picture he sent me has no ABS ring on it. So that just goes to show that even if you ring the main dealer, you're not always guaranteed to get the right part because people out there think you just ring up, give them a plate and you get everything right. You just don't. It's just not that easy. 
Right, so now there is like a circlip here, so I'm just gonna put the old pliers in. Oh, I'll tell you that. Okay, so you might be a bit tricky to get out. Huh. This should be a nice easy job. So let me just get something in there to wedge it. Oh, I was close. Get a flat base screwdriver. Let's try that again. Hopefully now with the flat base screwdriver, I should be able just to wedge it. You little fucker. This should be a two second job. Right. Ah, don't let go this time. Just wedge it everywhere. No, 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 it's gone. Oh, you're up. Now. Now. Yes. 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 Stupid clip. All that for that. Now. There we go. This ABS ring took about half an hour to take off, but anyway. Uh, and someone's been at this because they've made, they've absolutely peppered this with marks. Now, to be honest, it's not really a big deal, but you don't really want, you want to be marking as, as, as least as possible. What I'm going to do now is, some people I know do cut off this ring, but I'm just going to press the whole thing out now. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to put it on the press and uh, it should be sorted. But I'm going to order another two more of these rings. To be fair, they do seem to be exactly the same. There's just two in it, essentially. So I need four. Oh, the joys. Get this in the press and see what happens. Right, now I've got it in the actual... Now I've got it in the press. I'm just going to press it out and I can cut off that colour afterwards. So... There we go. Nice and easy, which is what you want. Only just fitted in it any longer, I would have been in trouble. We're close. I hope we're going to have enough room. Only just maybe. No. I've now hit the bottom of the uh, press. Right. Need to lift that up somehow. Put something underneath it. Thought I'd have enough room, but obviously not. Need another bit of a break. And then I think I'll be all right. What's that? Should do us. Hopefully, we'll soon find out. Right. Hopefully that's it. It's only maybe two or three more pumps. It's a little bit wonky, but for what we need, should be fine. There we go. That's all it needed. There we go. That's it, just ever since fall off. No problem, don't worry about it. So you can see, that's come off. We haven't damaged that. We can actually reuse that one. So the bearing and the front 
seal is actually on this part. And then we're left with just the half shaft. Lovely. So now all we need to do is take out the bearing from here, which should be nice and easy, really. Should, this shouldn't be the difficult part. But now I said that, you can let your life it's going to be. So just rest that on there. Get a socket. Uh, maybe not just big enough, but it might do. This shouldn't be that difficult. And there we go. One old, knackered. I'll put this up to the mic. Hope you can hear that, it's really bad. Knackered bearing. And this is our uh, front seal here. This should just come out quite easy. This shouldn't be a bit closer. If you can see that, this shouldn't be an issue to take out really. And there we go. One seal out. So you have to be careful, you don't damage it putting it back in. It's not really the easiest of seals to get back in. But very gently with a rubber hammer. It's going down but not going down, e well it is going down evenly but it's not going down all the way. So very very gently just on the side of that lip. It's going down, just using the weight of the hammer. Kind of going around it in circles so you know you get it level. Take your time. Now again, the most way is a special tool for this. But you really don't need it. I've done that in a couple of minutes. Haven't done any damage. Rubber hammer and it's in. So now what we can do is turn this around. Give it a good clean inside here. There's all bits of old bearing. That bearing just chewed itself to bits. You can see all the bits of old bearings. You want to get that really clean. You don't want any of them bits in there because all they're going to do is cause your problems. They'll get into the new bearing and it won't last long at all. So this has to be really clean. So we have the new bearing and as you can see on one side has like a lip that sticks out and the other side is flat. The lip on this one goes inside this way. So as you're looking at it, it's nice and flat. And that again, as you can see, goes down so easy. More or less went all the way down in my hand. Just the last little bit with the hammer. Now, we can go back to the press and press this in. Right, the easiest way I think I'm gonna get around this is I've got a bearing, an old bearing, that the diameter here is bigger than the shaft, which is important because you don't wanna get this stuck. This is the sleeve that um, holds on the actual, well, the retaining clip, and that fits really nicely inside the groove of that bearing. 
So what I should be able to do is essentially have this upside down like that. Rest it between these two, these two uh, big things of metal and then press it down that way. Um, but it'll be like that. That'll be on there. The shaft will go through and that should press together really nicely. That's the idea. That's what I'm going to try. So I'm going to put this on like that and then turn this upside down. Feed it through and then line it all up. Right, there's no reason why this won't work. The most important thing is you need to get everything so straight so you don't go in at an angle because if you go in at an angle you're going to be in trouble. Another. No, that won't work. Just something to take up the gap. Not the end of the world, but just so. That's too big. It's just in case I run out, the, the jack comes to its full length before the bearing's pressed in. It gives me that extra bit of a couple of inches. Now, make sure are in the middle, make sure they're pressed in together. Everything looks nice and straight. Bit of lube, which I've already put in. And go for it. Lovely. You always wanna make sure it's moving. If it stops moving, you're in trouble. It shouldn't do. Now, that's one thing I didn't check. I oh, know we should be all right. The bearing isn't too big. It's going to fit through. That's the most important thing. If you get a bearing that's the same size as the shaft, what's going to happen is you're going to press the bearing you put as a packer onto the shaft. So you want to make sure That definitely isn't the case. And there we go. Lovely. A hell of a lot smoother. We have everything on. We've just got to put the retaining clip in here now. Then the ABS ring and then the second retaining sleeve, which I haven't got yet. But we do have the retaining clip. Sorted. And now for the ABS ring. I'm gonna clear all the crap out of it because you don't want that in there. Make sure you put it in the right way because as you can see on one side it's kind of flat and then the other side it's open. And it's the open end that goes on here like that. Kind of use that as a slide hammer it's the retaining clip that actually keeps that in place so so once the other retaining clip goes on there that will kind of wedge that i'm going to press that on and this is obviously the old one but you get the idea it'll go down there press on keep everything in place ready to put back on but before we put it back on we need to clean up all the brakes because we're obviously replacing the brakes and we also need to take out the seal in the old um, shaft 